This is Standard Office Procedures, the podcast that helps professionals live and grow through culture, communication, and candor. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Standard Office Procedures. I am your host, Grace. (laughs) And here with me in the studio (laughs) is my BFF, Shannon. Hello. Say hi, Shannon. Hi. Hi. Um, So today we're going to talk about something... We're going to talk about how to make your job more fun. Now, I want to preface this by saying that we're basic. We base all of our podcast episodes off of blog posts that we've written at bluesummitsplies.com. And this one is we try to um, answer questions that people are asking on Google. And so the question that we were answering in this one is how to make my boring job more fun. So it's very specific. Or also people were saying, how do I get a boring job? So, which I love as a concept, like I want a boring job. I kind of get it though, right? Like where you're like, I just want a job where I can kind of phone it in and go to work and turn off my brain and yeah. then get a paycheck and go home. I mean, home. I can see the appeal, especially if you have a lot going on in your personal yes. life or maybe or you've got you, a really busy side hustle. Yeah, a really busy side that's maybe taken off and you're like, listen, I need to pull a paycheck and yep. I've got to work, but like. I don't want to have to think real hard. Right, exactly. Like something like very I do simple. not identify with this. I know. This is very outside of your type three Enneagram kind of existence yeah. where like your job is your identity to a degree. Yeah. Um, but so I just think this is funny because I love the idea that out there somebody's like, I want a boring job. Lay it on me. Um, but we're not going to go too much into that To be quite honest, because I feel like I run the risk of uh, offending everybody if I'm like, get this boring job. And it's like, I love my job. And I think it's pretty subjective, too. It is. Like, accounting always comes up as a boring job, right? And, like, the accountants I know really love accounting. And I kind of, I don't want to say I got an earful because it sounds like I got scolded. But I got a big perspective shift when I was talking to a friend who was an accountant. And she was like, there's a lot of creativity that goes into accounting for me. Like, she was like, I really love this stuff. And she was showing me the things that she can do in Excel and, like, the formulas and the inventiveness and... I was like, put in my place yeah. a little bit because I always think of, oh, I'm in marketing. Like my job yeah. is all creativity and you're just boring. And anyway, so it's I hesitate. Yeah. yeah, I hesitate to say like, here's a boring job and here's a fun job because I think, again, like you said, so subjective. So we're going to skip over that portion of the blog post. <laughs> but if you are interested, I guess, in what the internet considers a boring job, you can go check it out. Um, and I think too, there's boring parts to almost every job. Oh, That's, without a doubt. Yeah, like my job. Sometimes it's worse than others. Yeah, my job looks super fun and it is super fun. Um, because I get to do a podcast and I get to make videos and I get to, you know, do all these fun things. Um, but there's also a lot of like no administrative stuff or like mm-hmm. data was a lot of data analytics mm-hmm. and um, just kind of like more boring stuff that isn't the fun stuff that we all see on the surface. So keep that in mind too when you're looking at kind of other people's jobs and thinking, oh, oh that yes. one's boring and that one's really fun. We get that a lot yeah. in working on the creative side of things, yes. working in marketing. We get a lot of, oh, I wish I could just play all yeah, day. You I wish just I could have draw fun all, all the time. Yeah. And it's like, I spend 80% of my day in Excel spreadsheets, so. (laughs) You make so many reports. Um, But yeah, so anyway, keeping that in mind that this this, this, uh, blog post is a little bit all over the place. But we are going to talk today about how to make, if you already have a job that maybe you're like, I'm bored or I have a lot of free time or this isn't super challenging to me mentally, um, here's how you can make more fun. So we're going to go over a couple of kind of surface level things and then maybe Shannon, you can share some of your experience um, doing this. I know I've had jobs where I was like, I just need to stimulate a couple of brain cells, just two or three, because nothing is getting stimulated. Yes. And sometimes a job like will start out a certain way and then you get into a rut where you're having to do a lot of task oriented, like tedious work over and over again. Um, My, I had a job um, before I worked here that got into a rut where it was constant tediousness. And that was so boring. Not only was it boring, but I got carpal tunnel from repetitive motion in my wrist. We're carpal tunnel twins. (laughs) Carpal twins. I'm sorry. I said the word stimulated so much a minute ago. Okay. (laughs) So first thing that you could do to make your job more fun, we're going to jump right in. And I think this one's kind of a no brainer. Um, If if you have a job that's a lot of like kind of, um, like you said, tediousness or rote, just sort of repetitiveness, like data entry or, you know, something similar to that, Put on some music. It's like, to me, the easiest sort of like, okay, I just need something. Like if you're sitting in a room all day, I used to work for a medical office in high school, which sounds weird, but my mother was a nurse. And so I would do a lot of like dictation. Mm -hmm. Um, So I would, you know, whatever, I'm not going to go into it, but it was a lot of kind of like mindless work. And I would sit in essentially a closet and just be doing this like dictation and folders and blah, blah, blah. And I wasn't allowed to listen to music. 
dude. Dude. <laughs> it was like hours of just silence in this windowless room. And I was like, all right. And I was just sticking stickers on the folders. And like dude. my brain was oozing out of my ears. That when I finally did, like sometimes I would sneakily, if I was the only one in the office, I would play music. Yeah. That made time go by so much quicker. Yeah. And also it's kind of nice to get lost in your own thoughts when you have music playing. I mean, you can do it without music, obviously. But, you know, it's kind of nice to have a backing track to your life. Yeah. I know there's sometimes, particularly in certain types of offices or in more um, traditional old school kind of offices mm -hmm. where they don't let people yes. have headphones or earbuds or anything. And I just, oh, that's so mean. Especially if it's like a dead quiet office. And yes. Oh, that's like, why? All why? you hear is like the hum of the air conditioning yes. and you're just going to fall asleep. That's so. tough. So um, I think too, there's something to like having different playlists or different types of music for different moods. Absolutely. I think that's really useful. I mean, I do this in my job now where maybe if there's something I need to focus on a little more, but I still want something going on, you know, like more instrumental, no lyrics, like background yeah. kind of stuff. Or, but if there's something that's truly mindless, yeah. um, you know, podcasts or music yes. with words or upbeat kind of things, you know, so like having different playlists ready for, for different moods or different types of work can be really useful. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought up podcasts because um, that's kind of like taking this a step further is again, like Shannon said, like if there's something where you, where you really don't have to focus too much on content itself, podcasts are the best. Um, when we used to do our blog audits, um, which again, I'm, I keep giving you guys too much detail, but we used to do like, you know, our annual kind of like audit of our site. Um, that was sort of mindless work to a degree. Mm -hmm. And I would listen to a podcast. And I really look forward to it after a while because that was the only time during my workday where I'd be able to listen to this podcast that I got really into. Um, and yeah, so that's always a good option is to listen to a podcast that you like. Um, guys, I just found this new podcast called Red Collar. It's so good, Shannon. What's it about? What do you think it's about? Is it about murder? Yes, but it's so good. <laughs> it's about white collar criminals who go violent. Ooh. I know, it's fascinating. Anyway, this is a, they're not sponsoring the show. I just want you guys, if you like true crime and you like podcasts like Crime Junkies, which we talk about a lot at our office, um, go check out Red Collar. Anyway, that's just a suggestion. You can also um, watch shows. So here's the yes. thing about this. Don't be careful, right? Be smart about this one. If you, like I said, if it was me and I'm giving the example of where I was doing this very like kind of cut and dry, um, not taking a lot of deep thought or fo like, you know, deep thought or deductive skills job. If I had propped up like a little iPad and mm -hmm. played like the office or something I've already seen before or something that's not super like, I don't have to focus and yeah. watch the screen the whole time in the background as I'm doing my work. That would have been just fine. Like, I, you know, it, it wouldn't have impacted my work at all, but it would have helped the time go faster and I would have enjoyed it more. So if you're in a position, again, maybe it's data entry. Maybe it's something that's just very sort of simple and mindless. And if you can get away with, and I get away with, I don't mean like sneak away with, like sneak right. it. I mean like if you can do your job effectively while you're watching something, right. that's also an option. My husband loves to do this when he is working at home. So like a lot of times, so he works in accounting. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times he'll have um, more tedious things that he'll bring home and he'll just sit at his desk, put in his AirPods yeah. and just, you know, crunch it out. And he has this little, it's funny, I actually got him this day by day calendar that had a little, um, What's it called? A little stand. Oh for yeah, like it. a little phone. Like stand? a little easel. Oh yeah, yeah. And so he he like got rid of the calendar and he <laughs> uses it for there. his little phone <laughs> and he'll like stream show and it's always like movies he's seen a million yes. times or I think like that's shows kind of key. that are like bad movies that he doesn't really need to pay attention yeah. to and he loves that like yeah. and I mean I'll do the same thing like I have a little TV in my office at home and I'll put on like the. Great British Baking Show or something that is just gentle and doesn't take a ton of focus. Yeah, something chill. I think that's key. And um, I don't think Jess would mind us calling her out, but our graphic designer, Jess, you know how like with the iOS updates for those of us who are iPhone or iPad users, um, when you like exit or not exit out, when you kind of go to a different app with mm -hmm. the Netflix or whatever yeah. TV playing, it'll just go into like the little corner. Yes. Like the screen stays yes. in the corner. So Jess was drawing on her iPad. She was doing a design for some project we have coming up. And so the design was front and center on the screen. And yeah. then she had like the office playing in the corner. I do and that. I thought, like, Sometimes, That's, yeah, I, I like, like to do that at Christmas time with the Hallmark oh channel. God. I'll like put it up in the corner of my screen. That's it's just so, so Shannon pleasant. of you. I love you in Hallmark. <laughs> it's so good. So one thing I do want to say about this is, um, if you were going to do this at the office, yeah. make sure that you're not using any um, like like violating any bandwidth rules. You yes. know, like where because if you're streaming something, you could be sucking up a lot of power without that you're realizing not, without it. realizing yeah. that you're doing it. And you know, maybe they don't really mind if you're listening to something. They mm -hmm. don't want you streaming it on you know, their stuff, right. like see what you can download onto your device before that's you go really to work. Smart. And that's not going to suck up any Wi-Fi or any bandwidth or data and not going to get you in trouble from that perspective, you know? Mm -hmm. So if it's okay, if you do it at work, just keep that in mind. Sometimes you don't realize what you're doing and you could get in trouble for that. That was a hot Shannon tip. A hot tip. I liked it. Hot Shannon tip. 
The Standard Office Procedures Podcast is presented by Blue Summit Supplies. We're an online office supply store that puts you at the forefront of our focus by offering new career-building resources every single week. Sign up for our newsletter and visit our blog at bluesummitsupplies.com for free downloads, tools, and tips to make your job easier and more fun. Um, so the next point on our article is, I love this one. I think it's kind of funny and I want to discuss it with you because I read it and I was like, I don't know about that. Um, so if you're doing something that is dull or boring, we suggest that you make it a game. <laughs> Funsies. Funsies. I think what they mean by this is like, I don't know. I'm having, I'm having trouble kind of wrapping my okay. mind around like how to make data entry a game. Like it just doesn't really click. So, okay. So I ha- I used to do, like I said, um, there was a, a big piece of the job that I had before I worked here that was, it was essentially data entry um, yeah. and like sorting through information. But it could be a little fun because we had the, this huge database of all these different um, basically profiles mm-hmm. and it was kind of fun. Like they had pictures and interesting names and things like that. And so, you know, we had thousands and thousands of them, but sometimes the same ones would come up again. And so sure. sometimes I'd be like, oh, how many times in an hour am I going <laughs> to get that one? Like, I think that's a great example. Is this sort of like playing games with yourself? Is like timing yourself? Like how quickly, like again, I, I hesitate to say time yourself because I think yeah. that makes you rush. But just like playing these little games yeah. with yourself where you sort of make your own day more fun. Yeah. Um, the example that I've seen is conference call bingo, right? Where it's like, how many people are going to have like a free middle space is like <laughs> boss has their camera off or, you know, whatever. <laughs> like how, like I saw someone's yeah. pet or, you know, somebody's bed is unmade or yeah. whatever. Like you have this sort of conference call That's bingo great. where you do Zoom video bingo. But I mean, yeah, so these things that you're doing with yourself where you're just keeping yourself amused. It's silly. It's silly, but I, I mean, just try it. helps it. the time pass. I mean, and rewarding yourself, right? Like yes, say, okay, I again. have to do... God, 200 of these things today. So every time I get done with 20 of them, I'm going to do X, right? I get a prize. I get yeah. a prize and yeah. it's to look at a cute cat photo or like, what oh is gosh. it? You know, I don't know, but. Go go adopt a kitten. Every, every 20, time. <laughs> yeah. You'll have 25 kittens that's, by the time you're done. What a joy. A lot of kittens. I always like this kind of stuff because one time when I was in high school, my mother said to me, um, she said, you are the funniest person you know. And she meant it like in a. Oh, because you rolling laugh at yourself. my eyes. Yeah. And I was like, I've always kind of thought about that. And she obviously wasn't being like mean, but she was just exasperated with me. But I think that's true to a degree where like if you can amuse yourself, <laughs> you'll never be bored. Yeah. You know? Like I play kind of weird games like this by myself all the time. And then like I'm just like, because <laughs> I'm having a good time. So like you- I'm chortling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you can learn to amuse yourself in the absence of like outside stimulation, yeah. like you can make a boring job fun. I feel like there's like, I don't know if you guys ever play road game trips like with your kids oh, to have the time yeah. pass. So like, like the alphabet game? Yeah, like the alphabet game where you have to find um, words on billboards or trucks that start with every letter of the X alphabet. And Q are terrible. Or like, my name is Anna. My husband's name is Al. We live in Alabama and we sell apples. Like, and then you cute. go to B. So we do that. Like, I feel like there's a, there would be a way to tie this into particularly like one. data entry oh. if you're dealing with people's names or things That's like that. That's fun. That could be fun. I like that one. It's so silly, but it's, it, yeah, it helps. It, it does help. It's something to. It's something to like. All of us are. We are mental and cerebral creatures as human beings. Like nobody can just sit and think about nothing at all for hours at a time, yeah. right? So it just gives your brain something to kind of latch onto and to focus on, which is which is nice and needed. Yeah. Um, so another way to make it fun is to, if you're doing this kind of work, you can combine it with something that you enjoy, right? So if you don't have to be maybe in the office. And obviously we already touched on like, you know, watching a show or listening to a podcast. But if you can take it a step further and you maybe work remotely or you have a little bit of flexibility, if you're doing something that's really dull, and I've done this before in in my job here, I'll go to like a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. Like if I know, it also helps for if you know you need to focus. Like if I know I have to focus on something and I really don't need outside distractions and I really have to get it done, you can go to like your favorite coffee shop and get a drink that you like and like an atmosphere that you like um, or go to a park, you know, or maybe stay at home if you want, if that's not distracting for you. Um, but just kind of go into a surrounding that yeah. you enjoy. Go to the park. Go to I the botanical gardens. That's a really good idea because sometimes, especially when we're in the office or if we're working at home and we have something we really need to focus on, but we're distracted by all the other things we need to do. Like yes. I need to do the dishes. I need mm-hmm. to do these other tasks. But like, if you're like, I'm going to go to the coffee shop and I'm going to get my favorite drink and yeah. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to zone in on this task. Yes. Then like you can get it done. Yeah. It's and amazing. make it like a little treat. You know, you're you're kind of I guess if you're like I said, going to your favorite coffee shop coffee copy coffee shop. What? What? 
coffee shop. Going to your favorite. I mean, you could hang out at FedEx if you want to. Coffee shop. Go to Kinkos. They'll (laughs) love it. Um, But yeah, just going somewhere that you like, so you're motivating yourself. And again, it's like a little reward. Or like if you have somebody, a friend or a partner, or you know something like that that you know you can sit near or Mm -hmm. be with, and they're kind of a treat because maybe they're not your usual coworker, and you guys make plans to meet up together and work side by side. As long as they won't like distract, you know, you know yourself best. If you know you guys are just going to giggle the whole time. Maybe don't do that. Like I could never do that with my friend Emily because I don't think we would get anything done. <laughs> Shannon, somehow you and I have managed to work together. I think we have to because we're at work so people are watching us. That's true. They know when we're- <laughs> that is a fact. <laughs> anyway, so that's one option. Um, also, we kind of touched on this a moment ago um, with you know going to the park and going outside. Go outside. This section in our article is called Get Your Vitamin D and I love it. Ooh. Nope. <laughs> Are we going to cut that out or what are we doing? We're going to leave that one in. (laughs) Anyway, not that kind of vitamin D. You're going to go outside and get some sun. Maybe sit on a park bench. Maybe go to a botanical garden. Maybe go to a zoo if you live in a place with a zoo. That's fun. What if you're sitting and doing your work and there were like a bunch of little marmosets smiling (laughs) at you? You know, I don't think a lot of people realize that like you can just go to the botanical gardens and hang out. Yes. You don't actually have to be. That's why they put benches there. There's benches. Like ours has hammocks everywhere. There's a gazebo that's like perfect for working Gazebos. Yeah. That's Mm -hmm. awesome. And when the weather is nice certain times of year, I when I worked at home, I had this like routine where I would get up in the morning, I'd have my coffee, I'd get stuff done. I would have moved to the back deck oh, there's or the, the patio yeah. and I would sit out there and like when it was a little cooler I would cuddle up with my quilt you know or whatever and there was a certain set amount of time that I could be out there before the sun would get to be mm, too much too right hot. over me um but I loved that that was such yeah. a good little routine that is nice and it was certain types of work I would get done when I was sitting out there you know and, and that's so motivating because you you know you want to be there right it's not the same as sitting in your pajamas like in your bed I, I know we've all done this before especially during when we all kind of shifted remote where you just don't really make that yeah. distinction between like when was sleeping time and when is working yeah. time. Like you're kind of half in your bed still or maybe still wearing your pajama pants at your desk. Like my desk is right next to my bed in my room, which is a curse because I literally would sort of roll into my desk chair and then yeah. be like, I guess I'm at work now. And that distinction like that, you know, if I'm doing a boring job and that's how I get there, my mind just sort of stays in a muddle all day. Yeah, so you definitely. want to have this separation of sort of like, now I am here. Now I'm in this physical location. And if it's one that you enjoy, and especially if it's outside because the sun is so good for you, that can make it so much better. I mean, and if you can't leave your office or you can, mm-hmm. you know, you have to be in your office space, can you go wander by the window? You yeah. know, like, can you sit by the window for sit? a while? We have a sofa in our office that I love. So we actually have a bunch of couches, I think, in every office mm-hmm. at, at Blue Summit Wise. And what I really like about them is that they're not like offices that I see at bigger companies where they're kind of like these sterile, yeah. like, like you can waiting tell, room couches. Yeah, you can tell yeah. the people only sit there for like five minutes at a time to yeah. wait for an appointment. Like people, ours are so comfy. They're like they're, home office. They're living room like, couches. Yeah, they're living yeah. room couches. And everyone always sits on them all the time. Like there's always somebody on a couch. Um, and I love it because the one in the marketing department you know, it's like when Jess is drawing um, or illustrating something, she generally sits there. When Lizzie's reading something, she sits there. When I'm like sick of everything and I just don't want to sit at my desk anymore, <laughs> which is often lately, I'm just antsy. I sit there. Um, and it's just, it's something about yeah. like just being in a cushy little, you know, it's a different, it's not your yeah. desk chair and it's cozy and it's a little change for your body and your mind. Absolutely. Um, so if you have somewhere like that that's cozy, yeah, there. make that your reward for getting through your 20 mundane tasks is you get to go enjoy a cup of coffee by the window. On your sofa, potentially. And if you have an office pet like we do, dude, take make advantage that of that. Your treat. You know, it's so funny. We, got, I used, we used to spend a lot more time with Larry when there yeah. were fewer people in the office. And Larry is our office dog. Mm-hmm. So she, and she's a delight. And we used to all snuggle with her, but then there's so many more people now. I and would we lay on the floor the for office. like 15 minutes at a time. Yeah. Remember with Larry? Yes. We would just lay on the floor together and I would whisper things into her ears and I would pet her. And then she would put her chin on my chest and I would just stare at the sun. And it was wonderful. And now she has to we share don't her do love. That as with much. Yeah, there's like, but it's funny because when I remind myself, like, oh, I'm gonna go see Larry, and yeah. then she like pick up Larry and snuggle her for oh a couple minutes. Like that's so good. Anim- animal therapy is a real thing. It's like all my anxiety drains out of my body whenever I touch Larry and her little potato body. So listen, just bring your pet to work. Put your cat in your desk drawer. Stop. And every I will time do you it. need 
animal therapy. Just open that drawer. I think this would be really good for people working in an allergist's office. Mm, True. Bring all your cats. Mm -hmm. I'll bring my cat to your office. Um, And our last point to make your job more, your boring job more fun is to decorate your space. So this kind of goes hand in hand with um, just kind of your surroundings, how you can improve them and make them more joyful and exciting. If you have a, like, I think we've all seen the movie Office Space, right? Where like, it's just you know, as a kid, I was like, this is a funny comedy. And now as an adult, I'm like, this is a documentary um, <laughs> where it's just like you sit in this drab office and you do your drab work and you're like, Bleh, and everything feels the same and gray. Now, if you have maybe work that's not super exciting, but you have the power to make your office pleasant, do that. Yeah. I learned when I was in my mid 20s that like the like it's a pain in the ass to decorate. I know it is, right? I get it. Like you have to A, go buy the stuff and B, you have to hang it up and C, if you don't have an eye for design very well, like a very mm-hmm. good one, like I don't, it's kind of difficult to like figure out where to hang stuff and put stuff and what to put where. I get it. It's kind of daunting. However, the time you invest in doing it, maybe it takes you a week tops to get all the stuff and then hang it all up. Mm-hmm. That is going to pay off for the next however long you're in that office. Yeah. Like I've always told myself, if I know I'm going to live in a house for at least a year, I'm going to invest the week or two weeks up front to hang all the pictures yeah. straight away. Because yeah. I mean, I've moved in places before and I've had the pictures leaning against the wall Forever. yeah, for yeah. months. And then as soon as I hang it, I'm like, that took 15 minutes. Exactly. And it looks so much better. I'm in such a better mood. Exactly. So just take the time to decorate your space yeah. if you can. And you don't have to go all out. I mean, like I've worked in places where it was more like a cube farm kind of a situation, yeah. you know, but um I would get pictures printed on things like Social Print Studio, where it's where you can get um, square images printed on like a little cardstock square, yeah. and they look nice. And then you could just like hang them That's up fun. right in front of you, and they're really easy to switch out, you know. So like pictures of your kids or your family or like happy memories and. And switch them out every now and then. Like, it doesn't have to be a huge investment, but I think that's nice. Having a plant that you can take care a of. A plant. I, I think it's key to switch your pictures out. I love that because I have, <laughs> I saw pictures of my kids from, what, two two years ago? Yeah. Where I'm like, Atlas is not a baby anymore. But yeah. I'm looking, and I'm like, I really need to change those pictures. And when I do, I know it's going to bring me, like, new joy. So huh. do switch your pictures out and a plant. You said plant. So we actually have an article about, um, on our on our blog, about how effective plants plants are Mm -hmm. at bringing up kind of like office place happiness and satisfaction for all of the biological reasons like oxygen and et cetera, et cetera. But also just like a plant. It's a living thing. It's Yeah. It's a dash of color and it's just like there's something about a plant in a room. Like Mm -hmm. they're in all of the HGTV, you know, final house reveals Mm -hmm. for a reason. There's always standing plants and potted plants because they just look nice and they make people happy. And it doesn't have to be a flowering plant. Just get like a nice green. A little succulent or something. Or a succulent. A fiddle fig. Isn't a fiddle fig like a it's tall like a one? It's like a tree and they're really expensive. <laughs> well, get a fancy fiddle fig I think, if you want to be um, happy. those day-by-day calendars are really great too. <gasps> I love those for work. I love them. Can I tell them about my yes. calendar? Okay, Shannon, I'm so glad you mentioned this because my day-by-day calendar is one of my favorite things. Like it brings me so much joy every day. Um, my good friend Shannon got it for me for Christmas last year. It is a true crime day-by-day calendar, and every day it tells me something new about true crime, and most of it is brand new information, which is kind of impressive because I read a lot of true crime, but it is the best. So Well, now we're getting close to the holidays, and I keep seeing the 2022 version come up, and I'm like, should I buy it again? Will it be new? Will it be the same info? I don't even care if it's the same info. All right. Well, now you know what you're getting for Christmas. It's okay. I got you a day by day (laughs) Really I was thinking about getting one for everybody. <laughs> I really got you one. Don't get them all true crime ones. No, I would get them all something individual for their unique needs. Get Jess just cat. But seriously, I love David Eye calendars and like ones that you can engage with, right? Like not yes. just a picture, but like some no. like a little brain teaser or a fact or a story or yeah. a quote. Like, like I, I like mine because it's facts and it's really interesting. And they're they, like the it's a little story every mm-hmm. day, really. It's like a little case every day. Um, Lizzie is our coworker and she's somebody who I think like an inspirational quote yes. calendar would be awesome for her. Jess, I feel like, is somebody who, like, if we got our calendar of cat memes, like, she'd yeah, be in cloud nine. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, thinking about what individual people, now we're talking about gifts. But anyway, day by day calendars are wonderful. But I think they bring, like, a little bit of joy to your desk and you can interact with, and it's a new thing. And you're going to look at it a few times during the day. And it's just where in your day can you add little bursts of things to break up the yeah. tedium. Mm-hmm. And that's just one example. Where you I think do. that if you have a really boring job, you should get six different day-by-day calendars. I would and love then that. Just <laughs> it's like those um, those walls of clocks where yes. they have like a different <laughs> a different time it's for exactly each country, like but that. you just have different, a million day-by-day different calendars. calendars for each corner. Of and that way, like every hour on the hour, you're like, oh, time for Honestly, my new calendar. Not a bad idea. I think, it's a great I idea. think we've cracked it. I think we have. 
So let us know how you guys break up your boring days, if you have boring days. Um, and if you are somebody who is really interested in how to find a boring job, go check out the blog. I mean, <laughs> more power to you. Um, you can read more about this at bluesmanspies.com. And uh, we'll see you guys in a week. I love you so much. Thanks, Shannon, for being here. Bye. This has been a Blue Summit Supplies production. Good job, Larry.